Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm your host, John Townsend, and today we're joined by a special guest and good friend, Michael Dragoo, and today we are cooking Bubble and Squeak. Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Today we're doing Bubble and Squeak. Yep. Tell me, what is Bubble and Squeak as we know it today, and why did you pick out this particular recipe? Today it's a mashed potato based recipe. It's simple, it's, it's the veggies, anything leftovers from the week previous. You mix it all together, you put it in the oven or on a stove top and that's bubble and squeak. 150 years before that, it was a fatty piece of beef and cabbage and that was it. So um, it's easy to put together, it's not what you think it is and that's why I brought it. Well, it sounds exciting. How we So we're doing an 18th century version. What's this based off of? Uh, Ann Peckham has a uh, 1767 recipe for bubble and squeak. Okay, so, so this is this is gonna be fun. Let's get yep. chopping, huh? First thing we need to do is get the veggies in order and John's gonna start cutting on the onions while I read you the recipe. Take cabbage, boil and drain it. Cut it small and put it into a stew pan with butter. And some young onions cut small. Take some slices of beef that hath been either boiled or roasted, fry them, put them to a little vinegar, pepper, salt, and a spoonful of gravy. Serve it up hot. That's a word problem that most recipes are in the 18th century. This one's a little convoluted and sort of right. mixed up a little bit. It's a little easier to sort of reinterpret this as cook the vegetables, drain them, put the meat in, so. Which cabbage um, were they thinking? When they, it's an English recipe, English onions, are generally white onions or sweet onions. Mm -hmm. um, Spanish onions are yellow. So I've got a white onion and I've got uh, uh, more of a leafy cabbage than what we're used to seeing. Once we've got the cabbage chopped, we're gonna put it in boiling water and just boil it till it's tender. And Peckham mentions beef. Um, I picked a ribeye. It's a well-marbled piece of beef. Sometimes these recipes will ask for a veiny piece of meat. That just means a lot of sinew, a lot of fat tissue. Um, John's gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces. I chose ribeye just because it's, um, it's gonna keep its tenderness. We're gonna be frying it in a pan in a little bit, and uh, I didn't want it to dry out. Uh, once again, they don't mention how to prepare it, they're just a, some, the assumption is you're gonna prepare it the way you know how your family's gonna like it. This cut is a very nice piece of beef. It's gonna be very tender. I may not have been true for many of the times it was done in the 18th right. century. Uh, it may have been a less expensive cut of beef. Um, and this is this is hung well and very, very tender and there's their meat may have been very tough right. in that time period, but we can see that by the way the recipe's written, that this likely was a sort of a, this is a leftover, already right. pre-roasted. She's whatever. boiling it or roasting it ahead of time. I didn't want to fry it a third way or second or third way and just have it be tough, but these, these critters in particular were working for a yeah. living and you didn't dispatch them until their lives were done. And so, um, this beef is going to be tough from the get-go, no matter which cut you have, so. Our cabbage is looking great. We're going to take it off the fire and strain it. Our skillet is warming, and uh, now we're going to add butter to be able to sear the beef. Before we throw this in the pan, we're gonna go ahead and salt it and pepper it so that it already has some spicing in it. Unfortunately, this recipe does not include nutmeg, so we are going to restrain ourselves and not put nutmeg in it. Wait, I got, I got it. No, don't do it, you're not <laughs> doing it. No, I'm, we're not gonna put, see normally I would, I would put nutmeg I know that. in here, we'll do, but we won't. We'll just do it in this. <laughs>
While the uh, beef and cabbage is simmering, I've added a little more salt and pepper. I added some vinegar, apple cider vinegar in this case, and some gravy. Once again, they, they talk about gravy and they don't necessarily discuss what that means. But in the time period, in the 1700s, 1617 and 1800s, gravy was the drippings from a piece of roasting meat in front of the fire. And one of the things you see all the time in antique malls is these forks and stabbing implements that they were trying to get the juices out of the, the beef and, and then they'd collect it and they'd baste. And although that makes a wonderful crust on the meat, it's a dry piece of beef. So um, we don't do that today. We sear it to keep the juices in. When we're done, we let it rest 5, 10, 15 minutes. But in the time period, they were collecting the juices, which they called gravy. We come into recipes sometimes where they'll talk about a good gravy, something that's, that's been reinforced with other things. Mm -hmm. And then that's used sometimes as a spread or as just something else. It can have everything from mushrooms to other pieces of meat, to veggies, to spices and herbs. We got a couple episodes on that. One, we did a good gravy with you yeah. several years ago and earlier this year, uh, Ryan did an amazing Cullis episode. So definitely check out the Cullis episode for, again, what's going on with gravy. Yeah. Great explanations. Yeah. While I was researching this recipe, I came across the uh, 1785 Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue, and they mentioned bubble and squeak. So that's how I can date it back to at least that point. Um, and they say, Quote, bubble and squeak is beef and cabbage fried together. It is so-called from its bubbling up and squeaking while over the fire. Now today, we once again, as, as we mentioned earlier, we think of it as a mashed potato based dish with all sorts of veggies, whatever you've got in the fridge. And in this time period, it was not the case. Mm. Um, her recipe dates from 1767. This is a, a reinforcement of that from 1785. So yeah, I brought that because it's interesting and simple. This is easy to make. Last time you were here, Michael. Yes. Uh, the last time? Yeah, the last time well, you were here, you day. brought <laughs> stewed crab. Yeah, it was... So is this going to be better than stewed crab? It has to be. Yeah. Well, we could be eating we, it raw. And you, it know, you did it like it said, and it just it didn't work it's out. It's one of the so, few times I didn't test drive it ahead of this time. One, I apologize again. This this smells good, so yeah. let's find out. All right. Let's find out. Got some cabbage. cabbage. Beef, salt and pepper, yeah. vinegar, gravy. Yeah, that works. I call this one. That's a success. Good. This is very good. Um, and the beef worked out really well. Cabbage has got some great texture. Yeah. We got some nice salt and pepper, yeah. and just a hint of nutmeg, which really sets it off. You talk. I'm gonna eat. So what what comes out to you in this dish? Well, I think I'd recommend a fatty piece of beef. Um, those fats are melting in the pan, and then they're combining with the gravy. With in this case, I, I used beef broth. Um, and the vinegar is an unexpected. I wouldn't have put vinegar in with this dish. I wouldn't have thought of it, and it's it's excellent. Once again, I don't know what vinegar he's talking about, and and maybe a white wine vinegar would be as good as I used apple cider vinegar because that's that's what I think more people had. It's just bringing in the acid flavor. Yeah. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. But it's um, unexpected back of the tongue right. kind of hit without being overpowering. Really, I think the missing component in this one um, that people would say, oh, I don't know, is the cabbage part. The cabbage is really good in here. Yeah. It's a wonderful, inexpensive filler, and it brings in these flavors. Yep. It's really good. Um, obviously, the meat's going to be good, yep. but, the, but the cabbage is surprisingly good. It brings in all those kind of flavors and yep. gives you something to work against. I would say that when you're making it, pull your cabbage out and strain it right before it's done, because otherwise, if it's in too long, it might be mushy. You want a little crispness without having it be raw. Yep. So it's it's this is excellent. This is easy and it's one of my favorite things I've brought. It really is. This is good. So I've been thinking about this, Michael. You've been coming in as a guest on episodes for eight years, <laughs> since 2014. <laughs> 
Once again, I can't apologize enough. <laughs> I remember oh even that, that first set that was part of the first season, I think, or maybe, maybe right it was third season. Okay, right. Yep. That's right. So um, we were down at the pond at the yeah. time, that, that first time, yep. and we did, let's see, uh, um, the scotch eggs? Yes. I think Meatballs, the pancakes, pancakes with the kind of made butter and cream, and cream stuff at the time. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Great. Yeah. Just a couple of great episodes. And yeah. you just keep coming back. <laughs> Clearly I'm having more successes than failures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is really good. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, it's surprising how many people connect to all of the videos we've done. Mm -hmm. You and, and both of us. Um, I appreciate being your lab rat and <laughs> experimenting oh, yeah. with new uh, things. That was your first uh, interview. First yeah. guest to cook stuff, and I really appreciate it. Almost as much as I appreciate this. It's excellent. Michael, thank yes. you so much for bringing <laughs> this recipe in today. This one's was really good. You bet. It's simple, it's very tasty. Anyone can do this if you haven't tried it. It's definitely one to try yep. out. It's not very complicated. Um, thank you again for being, you know, guesting. If you would be interested in more Michael Tragu episodes, <laughs> You can find a couple right here. Try them out. And thanks for joining us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.